Hi, I'm Jay, and today we're going to tie a 1 16th calf tail bluegill jig. Stay tuned. So I'm at the bench today and we're going to tie a couple patterns of a 1 16th dart that I love using for bluegill. It's very similar to some of the other jigs, uh, one sixteenth ball and the ones what what I would call a football head, also in that one sixteenth size, that minnow profile type jig. Uh, they're all great jigs to use uh, for bluegill and and sunfish and crappie even. But I particularly like using a dart um, because of the way it falls. And I had an opportunity a couple summers ago, and it was just one of those afternoons where the, um, the lake was super clear. Uh, the sun was at my back, so I had beautiful, you know, I had, I had perfect visibility 15, 20 feet down, and I could just watch the jig uh, fall and stop right above the weed bed that was there. And I could observe how the fish would react. Um, using different jigs that entire afternoon and it really at that point kind of clicked there's something about this dart this shad dart jig um, that is attractive to the fish and i really think what it is is the rate of fall and and the um, angle that it falls at just because of its shape and balance so today i want to tie two one is a color that I just really like, has a little bit of flash. One is super plain, but what it's a, it's one of my go-to colors. Uh, very plain, there's nothing fancy about it. Um, super simple, but it's a color that I've always uh, had good luck with. It's a color my father loved. It was a jig pattern that he would use all the time. And I have something I wanna show you. I usually keep it up on the uh, antlers I have above my desk of uh, the biggest deer I've ever shot and this hat's been hanging there since 2003 uh, when dad passed and this is his fishing hat that he would wear everywhere um, and it would have all the jigs on it that he had recently fished with there's some heads here that are beat up some tails that are chewed up um, but they're jigs that he caught fish on all afternoon and they work so well. He'll stick them on his hat, wears this thing around town, and he used it as almost like a billboard. People would see the jigs on his hat, ask him for a card, maybe can I come over to the house and buy some jigs later, that type of thing. So, but what I have that I just took off the hat band and I'm gonna put it right back on so we don't lose it. This is a little bit bigger. Uh, this is a uh, one quarter. But I'm going to do the same thing with the 1 16th. So it's this shad dart. Ooh, pardon me. Let's get this situated so we can see what we're doing. So this is the 1 16th shad dart. It's a flow yellow with an orange nose. That's the color that we're doing. This is the jig off my dad's hat. It's a 1 quarter. He used black thread probably for no particular reason. That might have just been the thread that he had on the desk, like close at hand, and that's what he used. Uh, I will probably use, well, for this one, we're gonna use the exact same thing. I'll use black. Uh, normally I would use uh, an orange thread, would look perfect on this. It, it would match the nose and complement uh, the colors of the jig itself. This tail is more of a yellow chartreuse as opposed to, and this is just a bucktail, but it should be a good you should be able to tell the difference this is a darker green chartreuse this is more of a it's not flu fluorescent yellow <laughs> like that but it is it's more of a yellow chartreuse as opposed to a green chartreuse um, but that's what this jig has fluorescent yellow orange nose with the green-ish chartreuse. And in observing this, 
the tail is the length of the body, the length of the hook shank past the bend of the hook. So it's a fairly short tail because this is actually such a long head. A big portion of this head is actually body, if you want to argue that. But. So we'll put this back and we will tie this jig. There's another shad dart on here. Dad did like shad darts. Red and white, definitely another go-to color for me. There's other jigs on this hat in red and white pattern. Black nose, the white jig with a black nose, another favorite of his. And here is uh, some rabbit zonkers and this this probably was tied in the early 80s. Kind of interesting some of the things and these were all summertime jigs. These were jigs that he used in the summer. So we'll hang this back up. My great big deer antler mount. Antlers are the biggest deer I ever shot. Basically a hat rack. So so normally, like I might have mentioned, this 1 16th chartreuse and orange shad dart, often I would tie fluorescent yellow and orange this way. That's what I like, um, as well as just the straight fluorescent yellow. But we're going to tie this. The same as the example that was on that hat. We're going to start with a 2 watt. This is just a Danville 2 watt ny nylon. Lock this on behind the head and wrap the thread back to about the hook point and back to the head with open wraps. Snip our tag end. And on the jig on that hat, it was a single color and it was a fairly sparse tail. I fish very similar to the way my dad did. Um, didn't really pack a whole lot of hair on the jig, uh, mostly because we would tip it with some sort of bait. And then, like I mentioned with what I observed with the way the jig would fall and how the fish would react to it. I think there's something to be said about just the profile of this head as, as it is. So we don't need a giant bushy tail to represent or to create that silhouette. And we're going to measure the length of the shaft past the bend of the hook, which is roughly on my jig. I have some marks here. It'll be that first, that first mark. Perfect. Now I, I am only putting one pinch of hair on here. It's going to be okay. I want the hair to at least extend to the sides and be on top. That would be just fine. So there's a few wraps towards the bend of the hook. And then to lock it on, overlap those threads, crossing them and walking the threads back up to the head of the hook. Trying to keep this collar short. There's no need to extend it down the shank of the hook. And it looks pretty good on three sides. And now to finish this off, I walk the thread back about halfway towards the bend of the hook and then back to the head just to kind of try to match the diameter here at the base of the uh, head and also maintain that nice cone-shaped collar. 
Now here you can use a whip finish tool. I like to use just a loop of thread of a different color. This happens to be size A rod wrapping thread. And one, two, three wraps towards the bend of the hook. One, two, three wraps back towards the head, which locks that in place. There's our first jig. I'll get some pictures of uh, this jig next to the other jig. We'll see if I can get a picture of two of those and include it in the video. But this pattern, very popular. Uh, bluegill, sunfish, crappie. But like I said, I'm, I'm tying these specifically for bluegill fishing uh, to a lake that, that we go to pretty regularly. The other pattern that I like, it's the same 1 16th shad dart head. This is just a plain brown head. I like to use a red thread for this. So again, we're going with a 2 watt Danville round nylon thread. Nothing fancy. Locking it on, walking the thread with touching wraps to the point of the hook and then open wraps up to the head. So this is a two color pattern. And what we're using here is I have some red squirrel. And this has nice long hairs on it. I could actually probably tie a quarter ounce head with that. But it's the last of this tail here. So the fibers are fairly long. Some of the colors are getting a little bit more uniform, but there's still some nice mixes of brown red and black and then just a regular calf tail dyed or bleached white so we've locked the thread on i'm going to grab a pinch of this squirrel tail and this is going to be a fairly light pinch i'm not trying to build up a profile on this jig uh, like we said that the head I think provides a fair amount of the profile that that the fish are keying in on and I will, This has a couple Longer hairs that are just kind of poking out. I'm just restacking These longer hairs back into the pinch Taking out a couple that are just stray hairs, but they don't need to be there. So, just like the other jig, the tail will extend the hook shank length past the bend of the hook, which is just at this uh, first mark on my vise. So once I get my pinch where I like it, can switch my grip keeping this pinch very tight the whole process so three wraps towards the bend of the hook crossing over three wraps back to the head locks it on beautifully in place and I'm going to give this a twist so that darker color is now on what will become the back of the jig as we're fishing it so at this point we're going to add some flash there's two ways I like to do this. Uh, if I take a couple strands of red crystal flash, uh, once both colors are on and just put a two, couple strands right down each side, uh, seems to work very well for me. This is another way I do it, and probably one of the very few jigs that I tie that will, on purpose, <laughs> have something that will extend past the tail. What I have here on the side of my desk is some regular red flashaboo. 
And I'm gonna grab a pinch, doesn't have to be exact, but what I have here is about eight strands of red Flashaboo. Just lick that like you're going to thread a needle so you can square up the tips. Lock it on right down the top of that hook shank with a few wraps. And right now it's extending past the tail. And I'm going to snip this at the second marking on my vise. So the red does extend slightly past the length of the hair on the tail. To finish this, we're going to take our white cap tail. And again, taking a fairly sparse pinch. This tail actually has a lot of shorter fibers. I'm right on the edge of the tail where it, it's the part that rubs against the rump of the calf. So some of the fibers are a little short in that section. I'm going to unlock my vise just so I can turn it slightly. I want to see the hair. I want to measure it against the squirrel tail that I put on as opposed to measuring it against the uh, flash of blue. Once I get the pinch where I want it, switch my grip one last time and keep this tight. Bring it down. There's about four wraps towards the bend of the hook and then cross over and walk the thread up to the head of the jig. Trying to keep that collar fairly small. Add some wraps. Just made it slightly thicker to match the diameter of the base of this head. Just so the collar follows that same profile. And we can finish this off either using your whip finish tool or whip finish by hand or I like just to use a length of thread of an opposite color, a few wraps towards the center of the collar, and then a few wraps back to the head. This brown and white, the combination of that squirrel tail along with the little bit of flash that kind of peeks out from the end of the tail, I think is a really nice combination. But overall, for the bluegill, I honestly believe the, f the many times that we've fished and I was able to observe the way this jig would fall compared to other jigs that I was using at the same time and the way the fish would react this one it just it seemed to make a difference the shape of that head uh, is I think what did it so so there you have it two very simple patterns the 1 16th shad dart which is perfect for bluegill that first pattern being the old one uh, a color combination that I copied off my dad's fishing hat and the second one a very simple squirrel tail with a white calf tail with a little bit of red flashaboo in the middle it's irresistible to the bluegill so if you enjoyed what we did here today be sure to add some comments down below include any questions that you have on the things that we did here today as always be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any new content don't forget about subscribing so you can be involved once we hit the 500 subscriber mark and we have that jig giveaway uh, and until next time guys keep tying and tight lines